Would you join me to, with me together in our opening prayer at this time? Let us pray in unison. O oh God, who makes all things new, move in our hearts and minds today. Touch not just our intellects, but also the deeper yearnings of our hearts. We give our thanks and praise to you. Amen. Are there any announcements that you would like to share with the body at this time? Gee. Yeah. We have a women's meeting Tuesday night, and the bulletin says 6.30, and it's 6 o'clock. Women's meeting, 6 o'clock, Tuesday night. And all women are invited. All women are invited to the women's meeting. Um, while Jean has the floor. I think we need to sing happy birthday to her because it is Jean Kelly's birthday today. Can you give us a note, Jerry? <laughs> Until I get to be. It's been amazing to me how this simple practice has connected me to the presence of God in a different way. There are many ways to connect with God. And for Lent, our sermon series and our Lenten study will focus on nine pathways to enhance and celebrate our relationships with our Creator. Let us be still in this moment as we center ourselves. Oh God, as we contemplate you, help us to let go of what we can see with the eyes and step into what we can perceive with the heart. Amen.
I invite you to stand as you are able for the call to worship. Let us worship God today, for God is great. God has blessed us with life, with faith, and with community. Let us worship God today, for God is good. To God be the glory. Amen. Uh, please remain standing for our hymn of praise. Thank mm -hmm. you. Trust the Lord and do good. Live in the land and farm faithfulness. 
Enjoy the Lord, and he will give what your heart asks. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust him, he will act, and he will make your righteous shine like the dawn, your justice like high noon. Be strong before the Lord. And wait for him. Don't get upset when someone gets ahead. Someone who invents evil schemes. Um, now let us sing together the hymn of preparation. Our gospel reading today comes from Luke, chapter 9, verses 51 to 55, 56. As the time approached when Jesus was to be taken up into heaven, he determined to go to Jerusalem. He sent messengers on ahead of him. Along the way, they entered a Samaritan village to prepare for his arrival. But the Samaritan villagers refused to welcome him because he was determined to go to Jerusalem. When the disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to consume them? But 
Jesus turned and spoke sternly to them. And they went on to another village. Excuse me. Last week, uh, Doug noticed that his favorite blue jeans had worn thin on his thighs. And this week, they busted open. And so he said, it's time for some new jeans. He's not into that, you know, torn, fashionable look. So he placed an order online, and they offered him a $10 discount if he would join their rewards program. So he did it. Soon, they sent him a new member welcome email with a chart of member privileges and invited him to become a VIP member for more perks. If you spend $500 on their products, you're in. <laughs> but Doug didn't jump on that fast track. <laughs> $500 worth of jeans, woo! <laughs> We live in a world that's wired for fast results. Parker Palmer, author of 10 books, gave a 12 minute commencement speech at Naropa University in Colorado. This wise elder carefully chose his advice to these young adults launching into careers. He said, take on big jobs worth doing. Jobs like spreading love, peace, and justice. Those are pretty big jobs. He explained that our culture seduces us into lesser aims. If we're not careful, we'll spend our little day in the sun becoming more and more effective at things that don't matter much. The tighter we cling to the norm of being effective, the smaller the tasks that we'll take on because they're the only ones that get short-term results. The smaller the task, the quicker the result. It seems that our culture is obsessed with effectiveness and we measure it in short-term results. We reach for low-hanging fruit achievements that don't solve the most consequential problems in our time. If you want to make a real difference, you need to engage in a cause that's beyond the monthly sales quota, or you'll be disappointed in your achievements. Across our country today, some 94% of all churches are losing ground. For decades, millions of us have cried out to God. We've attended workshops. We've tried to reach more people, but the results are mostly disappointing. We feel this burden as clergy, and we know that many of you carry this burden as well. Thank you. I wonder if you carry a similar disappointment over other aspects of your life. Despite your best efforts, maybe a relationship went sour, or your career never went as you had hoped, or you suffered chronic illness or lingering pain. As children of our culture, we might measure our own lives on a chart of wins and losses, on whether we carry that VIP status or a platinum visa. I think God wants us to live by a different standard, not the world's standard of gold and silver and bronze. The name of God's standard is faithfulness. In the Bible story of Joseph, a gifted and favored son is kidnapped by his own brothers and sold into slavery. His life didn't go at all like he had hoped, and yet he faithfully used his gifts in Egypt, and God blessed him and made him a blessing. He revered God, and he did not 
take revenge on his brothers. He guided Egypt through seven years of famine and provided food for all of his brothers and their families too. In Luke 9, Jesus has set his face for Jerusalem. He travels from town to town with his disciples, preaching, teaching, and healing. And some of his disciples went on ahead of him like an advanced team, preparing for his arrival. They probably worked out the local timing, the place where Jesus would address the crowds. When they came to a certain village, a Samaritan village, the town rejected him. They didn't want Jesus to stop there because he was going to Jerusalem and these Samaritans were hostile toward the Jews. So his disciples, James and John said, Lord, do you want us to call down fire and consume them? But Jesus spoke sternly to James and John and I, I wonder what he said to them. Anyway, they had the wrong idea. For Jesus, this was not about instant success. He was not about to engage in a petty squabble between Jews and Samaritans. His mentality was not us versus them. His spirituality was holistic, not dualistic. He was on a mission to save the world, the whole world not to advance one group over another. Jesus was looking for long-term transformation, not short-term winners and losers. The disciples wanted to retaliate or punish these people, but such a response was not in Jesus' heart. It was not on his radar. Jesus came not to judge the world, but to save the world. And he stayed focused on what mattered to God. He didn't get distracted by getting even or immediate results. He stayed faithful. Faithful to God and to the mission God gave to him. For followers of Jesus Christ, faithfulness comes before effectiveness. Worldly success may or may not be ours. And it is not the same as faithfulness to God. If we accept our calling from God and take on God's agenda of saving the world, we won't finish that work in our lifetime. But we can stay faithful to God, to the big picture. And if we do, no matter what results we see, we can one day check out of this world with a sense of satisfaction and peace and the smile of God as God says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of your master. Movies work on the principle that Humans tend to be focused on the right here, the, what's right in front of them. They try to control our emotions and conclusions and neatly wrap up the experience as we reach the end of the film. In contrast to this, in the Netherlands, they have this giant painting called Panorama Mestog. It's 47 feet high and 370 feet wide, and it depicts coastal village life in 1881. It's mounted in this giant round building so that you stand in the middle of this panorama and it feels like you are standing in the middle of that village. To view the panorama fully, you have to linger and wander. And you can almost imagine being a villager in that place and time. My point is that God has a panoramic vision of our lives. And if we slow down a bit and 
and ponder the whole of life, God will show us how to be faithful, how to stay focused on the kinds of things that really matter in God's sight. There's not always a perfect outcome to this life, even this life. Not like the perfect endings we see in the movies. Jesus' disciples were focused on that resistant Samaritan village, which was immediately in front of them. But Jesus had this more panoramic view of his purpose. He set his face for Jerusalem, where he would finish his work, where he would be willing to suffer and even die, so long as he could remain faithful to the grander vision of God's saving work in the world. In this life, we can never see the whole 360 degree work of God, but we can stay faithfully focused on the things that matter to God. As Psalm 37, 3 says, trust in the Lord and do good. Live in the land and farm faithfulness. Brothers and sisters, keep sowing seeds of faithfulness to God and trust God to bring the full harvest. Amen. Would you please Stand as you are able as we sing together our hymn of response. It is well with my soul.
attitude of prayer. Oh, great I am. We praise you for your holiness. We thank you for your goodness toward us in Christ Jesus. We praise you for your faithfulness, even when we have not been faithful to you. Your constant love surrounds us even when we do not clearly sense it. Help us to receive your love into our lives, and not just for ourselves, but to share it with others, especially those who feel lost. We pray for the hurts that we have, some known only by you, for those in marriage near divorce, those who have very sick loved ones, for those whose emotions have been deeply wounded by the ones they dearly love, for those needing money, seeking employment. Oh God, hear our, the cries of our hearts, our, hear our needs and comfort us and guide us, heal us and make us whole. We think about people whose lives are being torn apart right now by impending war, violence, natural disaster, prejudice, poverty, and illness. Oh God, have mercy. We pray for the church around the world that we would be the hands and feet of Jesus in each place, bringing the good news of the gospel that changes people's lives in body, mind, and spirit. Hear us now as we pray Jesus' prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Each day, God finds ways that we need to be loved and challenged. And then God calls us to minister to others in warm hospitality, healing mercies, and the promise of resurrection and new life. We respond to this marvelous call through our giving this day. Let us gather our gifts together and offer them to God in gratitude and praise. Will our ushers please receive our tithes and offerings?
join together as we sing forward through the ages. <laughs> Go in joy to serve and love the Lord. Amen. You may be seated for our postlude. Mm -hmm. 